Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. And first of all, I'd like to thank Women Focus Canada and all the organizers for putting this event together and inviting me to speak. I'm sure many of us are inspired and motivated by the speakers so far, and I'm learning a lot from them, and I hope you all are too. So yes, my name is Miriam, and I'm a high school senior at Ecole McTavish in Fort McMurray. And recently, I have been named the winner of the Breakthrough Junior Challenge which is an international science competitions for teens to explain a difficult science topic in a three minute video. I made my video on quantum tunneling, which is a phenomenon in quantum physics that is closer to home than you might think. So now I'll share a bit about my journey uh, leading up to the prize. <clears throat> so throughout my childhood, uh, my parents would take me and my brother to the library very frequently at least every week. Uh, my parents were very involved in our learning, especially in early childhood. Learning things was something I never seemed to tire of. I always asked questions and wanted to know why things work the way they do, just like any five-year-old would. But unlike every five-year-old, I was lucky enough to have parents who guided me to resources to search for answers. My interests and questions always led me to science. So I wanted to become a researcher. And in late elementary, early junior high, I vaguely thought about the idea of doing science communication in the future as well. So in junior high, I would spend an, at least an hour every day after school watching an ungodly amount of science videos on YouTube. I'm not gonna lie, it still happens now, but a bit less often. And I had an exhaustive list of education channels that just had an endless list of content I would eat up daily. Um, I also loved it when we had a prompt for a project in class. Uh, creative application was really the most rewarding activity for me in school. It was like, it was almost as if the more vague the project outline was, the better. And sometimes if I didn't like the rules, I would uh, ask my teacher to change it. Or if I didn't think the teacher would let me, I probably wouldn't ask, but I'd do it anyway because I just felt like it, I enjoyed it more or I don't know. I just had a different way of seeing it, I guess. And it was in grade seven that I first heard about the Breakthrough Junior Challenge, which was five years ago. And at the time I knew how to make videos. It was something I was a, that I was very interested in. I would set up my brother's toy cars and film them or film clips of my cousin and I playing in the backyard and try to experiment with like little video tricks, effects and music. So when I heard about the Breakthrough Junior Challenge, I knew it was gonna be perfectly in tune with what I liked doing, researching, learning and making a video, a whole creative prompt. And I felt like this competition was like almost made for me. It was oddly specific to my interests. But at the time I was still 12 a year too young to be eligible, but I knew that I wanted to do it eventually. So I watched some previous winners and finalist videos to get an idea of, of the competition. And my God, it was kind of a turnoff for me because those videos had professional setups, animations that looked like they belong in a PBS documentary and just an extremely high production quality that my homemade videos could never compare with. And so for the next few years, I would think about participating participating in the competition, but I'd hold back when I saw some example videos. And it kind of went on like that until quarantine this year. And I made a few uh, videos for projects in junior high since then. And I knew my video making capabilities were a bit better, but I still didn't have like insanely high tech equipment or something. And actually thinking about it now, I had the same tools I did when I first heard about the challenge. I just learned how to use them in new ways as I improvised with other projects in between. So it was quarantine. School has slowed down by a lot and I had more than enough time on my hands and no exams. So I was already, and I also happened to be reading some physics lectures and watching more science videos. So I thought maybe I should do the challenge this year just for the fun of it, just to prove that, hey, you don't need to be a professional to understand complex science. You don't need to take science as a serious and dry and dull topic just to perhaps spark some curiosity and wonders and wonder through others in this video if it gets anywhere at all, which it wouldn't, I thought. So I got to work with only two weeks before the deadline and I started off with entropy as my topic, which was a law about the spread of heat. But I soon realized that I didn't click with the topic as much as I thought I would need to in order to make a good video. Uh, I was watching a certain video about entropy and it briefly mentioned quantum tunneling. And I thought, quantum what? Like I've heard about entanglement and some other phenomena, but never this. So I opened a new tab, searched it up and the spiraling began. I went down so many articles and videos and papers 
and and after a few days of like temptation to switch my topic to tunneling I realized that uh quantum tunneling was something that I thought I could tell a better story about so I envisioned the video and I knew what type of feel I wanted it to have so I knew the semi-documentary style that most educational videos had, and it was doable, but I thought that I should speak to you, the viewer, with a more casual tone. Not like I was lecturing you, but like I was telling a friend something interesting that had happened to me that day. I also knew that, like I was talking to a friend, I wouldn't try to throw advanced vocabulary at you or try to talk down to you or impress you or worse confuse you. I just really wanted you to understand what happened and why while keeping it light and casual and so there was one thing and only one thing I assumed the viewer to know and it was what an atom is and the rest of your understanding would be built from that idea. So I was working on my laptop at the time which was really slow and had malfunctioning keys and I didn't have an animation software but I knew how to make digital uh, illustration since arts, art is one of my hobbies and I figured out to sort of a way to sort of like cheat with my animating. I made a bunch of images, stuck them in a Google Slides presentation and hit next, 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 next as I'm presenting in screen recording and it looks like it's moving so voila, basic animations. But there's still something quite basic that I wasn't able to do so I helped a friend whose uh, editing capabilities I really trust and he helped me Put the clips together. So after a feverish 10 days or so, the video was complete and sent off to oblivion, never to be seen or heard of again, I thought. So news came along after a few months and I was called for top 75 and then semi-finalists and then finals. And I really didn't think it would make it that far and it was full of surprises along the way. And the day that I found out that my video made it to the top, I was really, I was at a loss for words. And after the announcement, opportunities just flew in from left and right, just like this one. And it's been a pleasure and an incredible experience to be a part of this. And, but there's parts to my quarantine story that included the role, uh, role models of women and girls who are tenacious towards empowering young women despite the pandemic. As I mentioned, I was reading a lot about fundamental physics and watching science videos and I had a lot of time to think. So that led me to a ton of questions and I wasn't sure where to start. So I emailed my math teacher, Miss Vladika. She used to be a researcher before becoming a teacher and she's an advocate for women in STEM. And she's the first scientist I've ever met <laughs> so I emailed her with a long list of questions and she offered to schedule a group call with other teachers and students who are interested in, the, in uh, having a discussion with these questions. So her family is full of scientists and she asked some of the question, some of my questions to them and shared their thoughts and answers and some of the questions led to other interesting topics too. And over quarantine, I also joined a youth a local youth, youth initiative called Queens in Code, whose aim is to inspire and encourage long, uh, local girls to pursue a career in STEM. And before the, pad, the pandemic, the group focused on after-school coding classes to teach girls how to code. But in the midst of the pandemic, the group at QIC developed a new plan, a virtual speaker series highlighting female scientists from across all sorts of disciplines in STEM. Now, the thing is, Queens and Code could have been on break until everything was in person again, right? I mean, it's a student-led initiative. The team of girls didn't need to do anything at all for anyone. And my teacher could have left me with an, I don't know, this question, these questions you're asking won't be in the assignment or in the curriculum. And they both could have left it at that. They, she didn't need to take her own time to help me, but in both cases, they did, she did. These girls, these women went above and beyond to still enforce their beliefs in supporting women's and women and girls despite a pandemic. So even a pandemic won't slow us down from the change that we need. Thank you. <laughs>